chose to have inequality uh, be our theme this year because we really felt that it was um, getting the right t tone of, or maybe starting to get the right attention that it deserved in terms of really understanding problems of security and rule of law and access to justice are so very often, and problems of conflict are so very often, in the end, really stories about inequality. They're stories about people who feel that the system isn't giving them a fair shake, um, purely because of who they are, their identity, um, their socio socioeconomic status, and they feel that um, there's not anything to be gained by participating in the system. And in fact, sometimes participating in the system means that they have to fight to try and compete with others who have different identities and different access. So we were really looking at how does this perceived or actual inequality between groups so often result in what we identify to be security and justice problems. Can we dig a bit deeper and learn more about the inequality um, that it's, um, that's at its core? What we hear back and what I also experience in, in participating in these types of conferences, it sort of starts with the individuals. Um, and there's many individuals from many walks of life involved in the field of security and rule of law um, who are here today, who are participating, who are meeting, um, who have the chance to exchange views and, and experiences. And very often that leads to a follow-up conversation. The more challenging thing, of course, is in the grand scheme of things, what does that then sort of all add up to? But today we had a lot of representatives from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I'm very happy about that. You know, there's a lot happening. Um, and so uh, to sort of find the time uh, to actually come and engage um, is, is challenging. But um, people have really made an effort, so that's great. And that is really has increased over the, over the last couple of years, I think, with the platform meeting. So that's, um, that I think is something that we need to continue to put time and effort into. Um, but, you know, the trick then is, of course, that um, you get people engaged, they get uh, excited about something or, you know, some part of the dialogue sticks with them and they take it with them. And then um, in the relationships that you're building in meetings like this and, and in other meetings of the platform, um, um, it's all about the follow-up dialogue. For me, dialogue is the key thing. My view is that the, we really need to strive to work in the triangle of policy, practice and scholarship. And what that means is that we need good information, good research, we need to be able to assess our progress and our failures and learn from them in effective ways. And so it's very important, we shouldn't just write off scholarship and academic endeavour as long as it's applied, as long as it's relevant to people, real people's lives. Um, but that means we need to plug into the policy space as well. We need to make sure that where those, this knowledge is gained, we have the right avenues and channels opened up for policy engagements and none of this is possible unless we create the right networks of practitioners, people who are rooted on the ground, learning through doing. And that's a real challenge. I think these events are only going to work if we find the right mix of policy, practice and scholarship and put it in the room together. And then I really think it makes a big difference. I've been coming to this conference for the last four or five years. Uh, for me, it's absolutely the best networking opportunity for people working in the security and rule of law field in the Netherlands. Uh, it's always an innovative format and they always have fantastic keynote speakers. I would say that events like this make a, a small but important contribution to policymaking insofar as they create a space for policymakers to come in contact with researchers, so people that are on the leading edge of knowledge about the security and rule of law field. Uh, policymakers are usually too busy to be able to do that, so it gives them a space to hear about what's new and fresh. 
Um, and it promotes cooperation and communication between people who usually don't get a chance to talk to each other on a regular basis. So that also contributes to more evidence-based policymaking. The great advantage of the Knowledge Platform is, is that because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Netherlands stands behind this, this platform, um, they have sort of a, a built-in interest in it. That's why, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of people from the ministry here today. And it looked like they were listening and enjoying themselves, so it's a good sign. I think for us, the role that we try and play and the role that I think that we have been playing and contributing is trying to get these three communities um, that we represent in the Knowledge Platform, that's the community of practitioners, people who work with NGOs, people who work in field programming, with researchers that might be from the policy research community, it might be from the academic community, and the policymakers who sit at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the Ministry of Justice or in various justice um, institutions. We get that these people talking together. Um, oftentimes the information that is kind of held or the ideas that are held in one sector are taken for granted. They are just seen as common sense. But the moment that they start trying to share those ideas with others outside of their sector, they realize, oh, maybe I need to explain this more. Maybe people don't all know this. Maybe this is something that I just thought everyone knew. And when those ideas get exchanged, then hopefully it foments new ideas, new ideas for solutions. <laughs>